Hey, good morning, everyone. I did a really short video last night just demonstrating on a few letters how to bridge font in Design Space on an iPad. And there was some interest in that video, so I thought I would do a little bit longer video demonstrating some more letters um, how to bridge font in Design Space on an iPad. So actually, I think I'll go ahead and use this phrase here because there are quite a few bridges that need to be done. So the first thing that you would do, I'll show you bringing the font in. Uh, let's start from scratch. Text, I'm going to choose a system font just because I don't have access and I don't pay for fonts. So I'm gonna use a nice bold font that I know will cut well. Uh, you can use your favorite font, whatever that is. If there's a bold version of the font available, I will often use that so that I know it will have nice thick cut lines. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna have, there we go, bridging. I'm gonna go ahead and do it in all caps. Bridging font in design space. On an iPad. And then as you can see, this is not centered, it looks funny. So what you'll want to do is edit your font, do the alignment, and we're gonna center that text. So that shifted everything so that it looks prettier. Now we're gonna go for the letters. We're gonna insert a shape, a square, and then now we're going to need to change this square to a rectangle. So this corner right here, we're gonna unlock that because if that is locked and you make this bigger and smaller, it will still be a square. It will just be bigger or smaller. We're gonna unlock that corner and turn it into a rectangle. And the concept of bridging is so that you don't lose these inside pieces. What happens when your machine cuts? If we were to cut this B out, your machine is going to cut this outside line. It's also going to cut the inside line, but because there is nothing connecting these inside pieces to the rest of your plastic you're cutting on, they're going to just all fall out with this outer outline. And I'll often use the analogy of, if this were a room and you were in this room, and out here is your stencil material. So say you wanted to go from this room and get out in the hallway, there's no exit, there's no door, there's no way for you to get there. And we want this plastic to be connected to this, so we need a doorway. That's what this bridge is gonna create. I'm gonna turn it a different color, and I'll always do that just because it makes it easier to bridge when I can tell the differentiation between where is this exactly, Oop, undo, where is this exactly placed along this black line? And it's a lot easier to tell if it's a different color. So I'm going to edit this color right here and change it a bright yellow. That'll be easy to see. And you'll want your bridges typically to be somewhere close to the width of your letters usually just looks best and cuts well. My fingers are frozen, so they don't want to work. Okay, so you can see this is a little bit thinner than the eye, but not half as thin. This will be a nice size. I'm gonna place this right up against, I'm gonna zoom in for us. Placing this right up against the B. And you can see that there's still some white showing through right here, so I'll want to move it over a little bit. If my fingers will work. Sorry guys, my fingers are just frozen and it's not wanting to work. Okay, we'll see if we can move the font over a little. <clears throat> There we go. So I'm gonna butt that right up against the edge. 
Now, if I wanted to, since I like this size and shape, I'm gonna go ahead right now, while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna duplicate this so that I have, they're all gonna be exactly the same thickness. But for right now, let's say I wanted to try to slice this one and draw my box around there. Where's my layers? For some reason, this is sometimes this is will have the word group by it. For whatever reason, this one does not today. Um, usually, this is a grouping of individual letters that form a word. And you would have to, if you tried to select your font and your square, and this slice is grayed out like 99 times out of 100, that's probably why, is because your word is a grouping. And if that's the case, you would choose your word, and then you would need to ungroup with this button right here. I'd like to know the secret of what I did, so that wasn't a grouping, but at any rate, so we can choose these two items by how I just did. You can draw a box around them, or you can bring up your layers panel, long press and choose them. Usually, it just depends on what I'm working on. Sometimes the layers panel is easier to grab things from, and other times it's easier to do it on the screen with my finger, so both options work. We're gonna go ahead and slice that letter. Then I'm going to move this and see, do I like that slice? And if I am happy with this slice, then I can go ahead and delete these three pieces. I'm looking at this and I'm actually thinking, oh, you know, well, it depends on how big you're going to make the stencil also is how tiny your cuts can be. But I would probably make this a little bit thinner. Just depends again, if your wording is gonna be super tiny, then your bridges can only be so small and still actually cut well. So I'll get rid of this just to get it out of my way. And now I'm gonna grab my other rectangle, place that right up against the edge of the R. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that one right now while I'm thinking about it so I have an extra. And you can leave that in the back. You can see how it's not covering this. It, you can leave it in the back. You can move it to the front. If you wanted to move it to the front, you would choose the edit tab, arrange, and you would move that to the front. It's wherever you find it works best for you or it may not matter at all. I'm gonna butt that right up against the side. Undo, draw my box around that. And you can see it did not choose the other square, which is what we wanted. We just wanted the one square and the font. And go back to the Actions tab and slice that. Then again, before I move on each slice, I will check and make sure I like the way this looks. You will see people say that they place all of their bridges. They don't do any slicing. They just place them all. And then they'll weld them all into one piece and slice all at once. The downside of that is that if you later realize that you didn't like one of your cuts, you can't undo a weld once a project has been saved. So I will just typically do them all one by one. So I'll place that. Draw my box around there, go back to the actions, and slice. Move that, and it's what I'm looking for when I check each time is that this is a nice clean cut, that I don't have some little bump out, jagged, funny looking edge. So that'll just be a preference on how, if you're happy with your cut. Oh, you know what though, I just deleted my uh, yellow bar, so I'm gonna undo those last couple of actions undo my slice and then I need to duplicate my square I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times and then I need to replace that bridge sometimes at the beginning I'll make a bunch sometimes I'll make one every time I do a placement so I'm gonna grab these two things and slice. Check this cut. 
nice and clean. Delete these and place the next one. So I'm going along, this has an opening, this has an opening. We're gonna need one in the O. Now that, I, I grabbed two squares, so that will not slice. You'll see the slice is grayed out. It's because I accidentally grabbed one of these up here. So I'm gonna see which one was my most recent one by touching them. And you can see that this one is lit up, so that's the one I need. Long press to grab the other one. Slice. And delete these extra pieces. We don't need anything in the I. This D would need bridging. This P would need bridging. Let's do an A. So an A, you can either go straight up the middle here. What I'll typically do on the A's is I'll use this turning tool and I'll make it the angle of the A And I'll, again, get it right up against the edge. And then do my slice. This might not be perfect because I'm not zooming in on it anymore, but let's see. So choose my square, choose my image, slice. And you can see this is what I was talking about, about making real clean cuts. I would personally go back and redo that one. I would undo my slice, and then I would move that over and do it again. And you would need a bridge. So besides the ones we've already done, the D has no exit if you were in here. That one's good, it has an exit. There's no exit here if you were in. No exit on the A, the O, here's another A, and we have another P, A, and D. That is how you bridge on an iPad using Design Space. If you have any questions, place them in the comments.